What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating a drink. Look at the damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please no. And yes, please no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, oh god, that kind of hurt, hit my chest, Ooh, my little bird chest, gonna be hitting it down, like, anyway, what's up people, it's me, El Teddy 27 and I'm back for another review, this is gonna be my review for Queen Sugar, it is season 5, it is episode 5, it is entitled May 19th, 2020, um, yeah, this episode was really a just an exhale get all of the bad stuff out and then inhaling a breath of fresh air that's really what it was um and let me say this so many times we watch television and cinema centered and around black people be it dramas and even sometimes sitcoms where it's just always so much going on. Every time you look up, it's just something new, something else beating us down, some other kind of way where we are just um, showing, you know, some of, some of the stereotypes that people have for us, showing, you know, a Black family that's just not getting along or that is um, broken or all of the fill in the blanks. And sometimes it's just good to sit down and appreciate quality cinema that shows nothing but us black people and shows us in a positive light, white boy God notwithstanding. But, um, <laughs> dear God, but I, you just, and, and, and you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a show like, even though we canceled this young man, The Cosby Show, because even though they had their family, you know, issues and dramas but for the most part we got to see and experience a black family that wasn't broken that wasn't um you know all of the usual stereotypes that we didn't have to every week be bombarded with some new trauma and something like that we just ha were able to enjoy what it was to experience being black in america and i think that you know i'm not saying that we're monolithic in who we are as a people but there are a lot of shared experiences between blacks, black people and how you grew up, regardless of what part of the country that you grew up in. And so there were um, they, they, they spotlighted that a lot during this episode. You just really got to see a black family just love on each other and enjoy on each other and just, you know, just give you, you know, a nice warm feeling in the middle of what was a lot of fuck shit and fuckery. Now, I'm sure maybe next week they'll get back to the same old, same old. But this week, they gave us just a <sighs> moment. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know how people always say inhale, exhale? I always say um, exhale first. Get all of the bad stuff out. Wait a moment. Let all of that bad stuff dissipate in front of you. And then inhale fresh new air. So it's like a... So you do a whole... And now you can breathe in and get the good stuff. I, I don't know. That's just metaphorically what I felt this episode. So we start off with Ralph Angel and Darla. They were on the porch. They were, you know, discussing how they were going to arrange and put all of this stuff together today and how they were going to make it happen. He talked about making this trellis and stuff that they could, you know, get married under and so forth. And so they were, you know, planning it out. They were having a, you know, same day wedding. A rush to nuptials. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to call it rush, but same day wedding. Last night, they, you know, decided they were going to get married, woke up to, um, next day what's the next day i don't know let me go back to um last episode and see last episode i think was i don't know but it would it seemed like what happened was they called everybody um that morning and say hey come over we get married stop what you do we get married because everybody commented on i ain't know this morning that i was gonna be you know at this wedding so which is cute for a show but kind of disrespectful in real life because although people you know were at home during the pandemic and so forth and so on people a lot of people were still working um 
from home and you know you might have had things going on that day that you may have you know that might have been really important and you might not have been able to get out of whatever that was that day. I, just, I just don't know I, I, I don't know I just the hell I don't oh something must have fell out oh something did fall out of my pocket because I was like what the hell yeah that fell out of my pocket oh, Jesus just stuff just falling anyway <laughs> um so Darla um talked about leaving a message for her mom but her mom hadn't got back with her and she was just wondering if or why her mom wasn't upset that she wouldn't be able to make it in such short notice for the wedding and she was kind of commiserating a little bit about that but you know it is what it is that's what happens when you have a same day wedding um she said she wants she asked um Ralph Angel if it would be okay to ask Charlie to be the maid of honor because her and Charlie are in a better place now and she really looks up to her Charlie was I mean Ralph Angel was like absolutely um, and then we see um, them go in and they tell Blue. And Blue is all happy <clears throat> about it. You And I love, I told you, I love seeing this development and the growth in Blue and him just um, just becoming this phenomenally gifted and intelligent young man. And um, he's um, told by Charlie about the whole you know, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue and, and everything. And it was so cute when they said, hey, he was like, oh, you already got something blue. It was just a real cute moment. Aunt Vi, hey, y'all know I'm not the sappy cute moment. I, I actually don't like sappy cute moments where it's all lovey-dovey and touchy bit. That's not the kind of television. So let me say that too. That's not the kind of television. That's not the kind of stuff um, that I like to watch, which is why I don't like that show, This Is Us, because they just give me way too much, too much. But I do like this show. Um... But that moment was so cute. Aunt Vi is on the phone with Hollywood and they discuss the wedding and so forth, the same day wedding and so forth. And then we find out that he has to take care of all of his mother's um, arrangements that day, which I don't know. You know, I, I nitpick and I pick apart because it sounded like at that point they were talking about him making arrangements. And then by the end, by the midday or afternoon, she had already been cremated. So I don't know by her saying make an arrangement, the cremation had already happened. You know, usually how they work is when you want somebody to cremate it takes them a couple of weeks before um at the earliest maybe a couple of days but you're not going and getting somebody cremated and getting the ashes the same day it takes them a little bit of uh, a little while before you get those ashes uh I, i'm just telling you what i know i've been through it a couple of times so um but we'll get to that part later he feels uh but one of the things that they spotlighted was them telling him he couldn't have a funeral for his mother and the fact that um he felt his mother deserved one and and i my heart went out because i remember last year i had several friends and um who had lost a parent a spouse a child another loved one and were told no you're not going to be able to have a um funeral no you cannot have a full burial for them some of them were allowed to do graveside services but even then they were limited to the number of people that could come because they all, yeah, they, it was, yeah, it was just so unfortunate for somebody to, like Hollywood say to have lived their whole life and given back so much to people and not being able to have that their day and their time where people could come and celebrate their life and, and, and be there for them. It was just really unfortunate um, at the time. So, but Vi did give him some words of solace, some words of comfort, and she was right there. She was the doting um, wife being there. And I just, and I know Hollywood kept saying, don't come, don't come, don't come. But I really wish Vi was there with Hollywood. I know they need Vi, but Vi husband needs her right now. And I really wish she had just said, screw that. I don't care what you say. I'm coming up here. You're my husband. You're my man. Your mom has died. I'm coming up there whether or not you like it. Um. So then we see Nova um, talking to, at home talking to white boy cop about the same day nuptials. And she's really happy for him. She's going through some old pictures of them when they were young, of their mom and dad and her and Ralph Angel when they were young and talking about how quickly time flies and so forth. And, um, you know, wishing that her mom and dad could be there at the wedding to see Ralph Angel um, get married and be, you know, so much in love. So she's really excited for it. Down around Angel's house, they're getting um, everything set up and ready, getting everything together for the um, wedding. You know, I have this horrible um, bit of a lot of times when I'm referencing a wedding, I will say funeral. And I don't know why. It's just, I don't know if it's a Freudian slip or whatever it is, but I do that so often. Like, I'll be talking about a wedding and I will say funeral instead of wedding. I don't know. I don't know why. But anyway, that's just one thing that, so if I do that, y'all forgive me now because I just telling you it happens. Anyway, Blue um 
so they're all talking on the porch. Blue calls out from the house and says, Aunt Charlie is on the phone and says she'll be over in an hour. So um, Charlie comes over and has a surprise virtual um, bridal shower set up for um, for um, Darla. And Darla's mom is on there, Aunt Vi and Nova is on there. It was real, you know, real impromptu, real, you know, they have a whole lot of time to get it together. You know, that's what happens when you have the same day nuptials. But I was glad that, um, that Darla's mom was on there and in support and gave her the encouragement that they needed. They talked about Blue. Um, and the fact that Darla had gotten, uh, had him given an IQ test, uh, which I think is important. I do think that is black. That I'm glad they're talking about that because if you are the parent of a child that you know, you know, I, I think my child might be a little advanced. They might be gifted. Start it early, as early as when you first start to notice and say, ah, my child might be a little more advanced than the rest of it. Go ahead and give him, give him an IQ test. Have them um, administer the IQ test so that way you can um, know early on that, yeah, my child is, you know, gifted and you can cultivate the gift and help it grow and flourish. That's something that helped me early on because I was tested very early on. And I remember my grandmother going to them and saying, mm -mm, no, he's go ahead and give him his IQ test. And I did well, but and it helped me um, open doors and it forced them to put me in programs that they probably would not have wanted to put me in because I was black at the time. And um, it, you know, pushed and forced the door open for me. So I, I always say that, go ahead, better, it's better you know where your child is. Let them tell you, well, no, he only has a 104 IQ, which is normal, but not necessarily gifted. Rather than you got a child sitting over here with an IQ score that's 104. 40 and you you know thinking you know that they just bad and busy when really they're gifted that was my little sidebar let me get back to where we are um ralph angel then calls hollywood and um you know hollywood is saying that you listen i gotta take care of my stuff with my mom i'm not gonna be able to make it i'm sorry and ralph angel like listen bro you good you're dealing with the death of um your mom and i i what i thought they were going to do is have ralph angel see how i probably would have written it was Hollywood is always this big brother to Ralph Angel and helping him and through situations and talking him out through situations. But in this case, Ralph Angel had already been through this situation, having lost both his mom and his dad. And he knows what's that, what that's like. So I thought that they were going to give us a moment where Ralph Angel kind of flipped the switch and was um, giving, you know, advice and helping um, Hollywood through this situation, seeing as how he had already lived through this and gotten through it. And so they didn't give us a lot of that. They just, um, kind of, you know, rushed it along a little bit. Cause then they said that he had gotten the ashes and spread the ashes at this lake that they used to fish at. And that's what my mind was like, but wait a minute, crematoriums or funeral homes, they don't get you ashes that fast. They don't do no same day ashes. It takes them a couple weeks before they give you ashes at least where I'm from now. I don't know. Maybe it's different in these other areas. Y'all let me know in y'all area if it happens that fast when somebody get cremated. Anyway, uh, but Ralph Angel was like, regardless whether you're here or not, you're still my best man. Um, that has to be tough because if I do ever get married, I mean, if y'all got somebody, you know, y'all want me to, you know, look at in terms of marriage material, let me know. Shoot me a comment. Hit me up in a DM. No, but if I do happen to get married someday, I would be heartbroken if my best friend couldn't be there by my side, my best man, I would be heartbroken. And so you kind of do want your best friend there, but this is what happens when you have same day nuptials. Anyway, we did see Ralph Angel and Darla, they're talking, not Darla, Charlie. And they're talking and um, they're talking about, you know, the wedding and everything. And um, she was like, yeah, cause when this is all over me, we're going to take Charlie out to Vegas and have a real bridal shower, or bachelorette party, whatever she said. Ralph Angel was like, mm -hmm, you ain't taking my wife out there to no brothel out there with those whores and skanks and tramps out there in Las Vegas. No ma'am, no God. And so anyway, she suggests um, um, Micah perhaps being the best man to fill in for Hollywood since Hollywood can't be there. And he was like, cool, that's fine. They then start to tease each other like they used to back when they were little. He called her big head. She called him um chicken legs he called and drumsticks something like that they were it was a real cute uh banter back and forward and then they were like so uh, obviously they used to race a lot back in the day in the um in the fields and they went and they did that um again and it was just a moment where you just saw siblings you just saw th this black family the, the whole time they were just I was, the whole hollywood 
mom dying part notwithstanding. It was just a moment over and over and over where there was just happiness. And so many times on this show, you don't have a chance to be happy. You just are always, ah, 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 so much stuff going on. And so we just needed to, you know, we just needed that. So, um, we then see Charlie and Micah at home. They're getting dressed and getting ready. And, you know, she schools Micah on the etiquette of getting married, how, you know, women are not supposed to wear white and why they're not supposed to wear white. And she tells him, listen, men, even the strongest of men, your father, Ralph, Angel, everybody, on their wedding day, they, you know, are fearful. They question and second guess themselves. And you as the best man are there to support him and so forth because you may see him vulnerable in ways that he's never been vulnerable before. It happens. Um, we then are at Ralph Angel's house. And so you see Blue and Ralph Angel have this beautiful moment, father and son. And before the wedding, you know, it's, it's just, it, it was all great. It, it all meshed well. It was good. The music during the show was great. The cinematography was uh, impeccable as usual. Uh, Micah came through. They had this whole, you know, thing with Micah pretending like he forgot the ring. And this, that, the third. It was just real cute. Charlie gives, um, um, goes um, to talk with Darla, um, and she gives Darla this, um, this letter or this um, piece of writing that Nova had set up before she um, got there. Now, here's my question. How does this piece of writing get up to St. Joe before Nova, who's driving up there? I just wanted to know, but maybe Nova was already there and I don't know, but it, they got this piece of writing from Ralph Angel and Nova's mother, Trudy, that Nova had sent for Charlie, to, for Darla to read. And it was this beautiful letter um, all about how her mom was saying she loved Ralph Angel. And he was her angel and, you know, she never thought she would have another child and she hopes he finds love in whatever manner. Um, I, I did focus on the fact that she said, I hope that he finds love in whatever form that may be. Not limiting it to say, oh, I hope he finds a wife and a woman. I just hope he finds love in whatever form that may be. And, you know, I, I liked that they did that. I was I was paying attention. Um, and it was beautiful as well. And then we have the wedding. The wedding went as weddings do. Hollywood was able to make it. Wedding went through without a hitch. They, during, I told you they had great music. Charlie played my song by Tony Terry when I'm with you. If y'all don't know who Tony Terry is, that man sings down. Shouts out to Tony Terry. My favorite song is Everlasting Love by Tony Terry. You need to go look that up too. But um, everybody knows when I'm with you. When I'm with you, I hear a song that makes me laugh and smile and sing to you. When I'm with you, child. That's my jam, man. That is my song. Anyway. Um, then, you know, they went to the reception, white boy cop, um, you know, there was this cute little moment where Ralph Angel throws the guard and it goes toward Micah and, uh, um, Charlie quickly grabs the guard and was like, uh-uh, don't try that, you would not be getting married no time soon, okay? Because he ain't ready to get married, he is not ready. And then Nova and white boy cop have this whole talk about their future and whether or not they see themselves getting married. I ain't care. Y'all know I do not. I hate their whole relationship. I do not want. I don't see it for them. I don't want them to have no marriage. I don't want them to have a happy ending. I want no parts of Nova and white boy cop. We then see Nova goes over to her mother's gravesite where they um, put the little tomb headstone or whatever. And she had this moment where she's praying and talking to her mom. You know, saying that, you know, I know you were here. I'm going to need strength and so forth and so on. I don't know what that means. If that's foreshadowing, something's horrible about to come. But it took me back to last episode when you saw Ralph Angel talking to his father. Because we know Nova is kind of like the embodiment of her mom. Ralph Angel is kind of like the embodiment of um, their dad. And so you had Ralph Angel last week talking to his dad at the end of the episode. This week we have Nova talking to her mom at the end of the episode and both of them talking to their parents posture um so i i i i wonder what this force shadowing means going forward um and then at the end there at this reception of course you're not gonna have a black family get together and not play frankie beverly and Maze before i let go not that trash as beyonce mess that she came uh, did redo. i mean ain't that much ain't trash but give me frankie beverly and Maze. okay frankie beverly i need to hear him i don't need to hear beyonce skank trying to say that song 
And it was just, it ended on a very positive note, just this black family dancing, enjoying each other. They had the whole cake thing, over the cake. just a, a beautiful piece of cinema that just showed just a black family enjoying a wedding day in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of the world, you know, crashing down damn near around them. They found this space to block everything out and just enjoy themselves and enjoy this moment. It kind of went off from there. I did notice that part where Darla's mom was talking about Blue perhaps coming and moving out there to DC to go to some school that Michelle Obama and that, Mich not Michelle, Malia and Sasha Obama went to. I ain't here for it. I do think that he probably needs to go, go to a school maybe outside of St. Joe's Parish, maybe in a big city. Maybe he can go with Auntie Nova because maybe there's bigger schools down in New Orleans, New Orleans that can, um, you know, meet his needs as a gifted child. But by no means do I think he should have to go all the way to D.C. But that's not here or there. That was the whole episode. I know it wasn't a lot, this episode, in terms of drama and stuff like that. But it was still beautiful. It was still what we needed, what the family needed at this time. And I'm sure... Moving forward, there's going to be a whole lot of going on, a whole lot of drama. We'll see what they have for us down there at St. Joe's Parish. Come, to next, come next week, okay? That's all I got for y'all. Thank you all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.